Measure the tooth which is going to be prepared before you start the preparation. These are the different types of burrs which are going to be used for posterior tooth crown preparations. These burrs include the tapering fissure burr, the tapering rounded end burr, the straight fissure burr, the straight rounded end burr, and torpedo shaped, football shaped, and diamond shaped burr. Next, we will be preparing the proximal surfaces. Uh, I normally start with this one. This step is most crucial as we need to maintain the contact points also. So whenever you start, don't place the burr on the contact point, rather place it slightly away from the contact point so that once you start preparing, uh, you will be also not touching the adjacent tooth. Uh, keep the burr one, 1 to 1.5 millimeters away from the contact point normally and whenever, as you can see in this picture, whenever you see a contact point, look at the shape the size the direction of the contact point in this case is slightly slanted and when it's slightly slanted maintain the same type of preparation don't overdo or don't change the angulation of the contact area and uh, in this way you can easily make sure that you are cutting not cutting over cutting the tooth structure you need to start by brushing strokes of the burr and this brushing strokes will maintain the tooth structure which is to be prepared, which is to be reduced accordingly. And, and in this way, since you are using a tapering fissure bar, you will be able to maintain the tooth structure which is required and not cut enough tooth structure. Now we're cutting the distal surface of the distal contact point and the distal contact point is also going to be reduced the same way the brushing strokes on the occlusal surface going downwards breaking the contact point and it thereby also uh, making sure that the adjacent tooth structure is not being jeopardized the enamel lip remains between the two the adjacent surface and this enamel lip breaks off easily after the burr has reached the tooth surface the uh, broken the contact surface area so in this way we can also ensure that our burr has not touched any adjacent tooth surface. Now we can assess if there are any tooth structure which has been damaged by the tooth and this is an easy way to find out about any wrongdoings or any un uh, over preparations prepared in this area. So after doing this crucial step, now we can pr proceed with the occlusal preparation. I normally mark the central fossa and the central fossa is marked so that we are sure that we are within the same limits of the central fossa. Now after the preparation, uh, if we don't ma maintain this uh, location of the central fossa, the crown preparation, the crown, uh, the technician might shift the central fossa away from the where it actually is and this will jeopardize the, uh, the strength of the restoration. So we start off with the uh, depth cuts and these depth cuts are going to be, uh, we make sure that we place these depth cuts according to the depth of the burr that is being used. In this case, the burr, it is 1.35 millimeters and we make sure that the cusp tip as well as the central fossa both are reduced with the same amount of depth. And in this way, we can ensure that the tooth structure overall, starting from the cusp tip to the central fossa, has been reduced uh, equally. In this uh, shot, you can see that the burr has, is totally embedded in the tooth structure. Now, in this position, after we've, we've made the depth cuts, we now join those depth cuts and we reduce the remaining part of the tooth structure in between. This way, we will be able to clear out all the tooth structure which is required to be reduced. But the only thing is in depth cut status is that once we are reducing the uncut surface, uh, we tend to over reduce uh, the other surfaces also. So care should be taken once you are uh, embarking on this step. Uh, another thing that you need to understand is that always keep the burr within the whole depth of the tooth structure in the central fossa as well as on the cusp tip. This way, you are going to ensure that all of the tooth structure has been properly reduced and uh, you may need a little sm small amount of uh, adjustments afterwards. After this, we will be reducing and smoothening out the surface, the excess uh, preparation or any uh, leftover areas of the tooth preparation. Uh, looking at it from the side view, we will assess 
any other uh, uh, preparations that any of the tooth surface area that needs to be prepared reduced and, and anything which is less prepared or under prepared we will correct at this position uh, this is a uh, and also very important step now in this condition this is the the situation in which we are preparing the lingual aspect of the uh, preparation and the lingual cusp in this we have uh, we're not going for depth cuts but rather we'll go for depth plane uh, the only difference between a depth cut and a depth plane is that in the depth cut we are preparing by making some depth cuts and then joining the rest of the surfaces together but in the depth plane what we do is we make a one cut according to the depth of the burr and then we reduce the whole of the tooth structure according to the depth of the burr and in this way there are no uneven edges that can lead to uneven surfaces so uh, it's a preference as a choice which anybody can have according to their own uh, technical ac expertise and skill and the ease by which they can do it one thing that you need to make sure is that the depth plane is only made with a wider diameter burr and that's easier to prepare whereas with the narrow diameter burr depth now we can measure the amount of tooth structure that has been reduced as you can see it now it's at five millimeters previously it was seven millimeters so now we prepare the buccal surface and by preparing the buccal surface we need to have a straight fissure burr the straight fissure burr is going to prepare the shoulder margin as we go we have, we have decided to prepare the po uh, porcelain infused to metal crown preparation so the best way is to prepare the buccal surface into planes the inclusal plane and, or the incisal plane and then the cervical plane don't take the burr immediately to the cervical area uh, after you have cleared the uh, the clusal surface and then you know how much amount of tooth structure is remaining then you can decide whether you want to go for a subgingival or equigingival or a supragingival margin now in this uh, in this stage we have prepared the incisal or the clusal half now we're preparing for the cervical half the cervical half <coughs> in the video i'm preparing with uh, depth plane uh, technique not with the depth cut technique and I'm going to be embedding uh, the um, full length full width of the di uh, full diameter of the bar on the on the tooth structure notice that we I'm not using a one uh, 1 1.3 millimeter or SF 13 bar but rather I'm using an SF 11 bar which has a diameter of one millimeter <coughs> so we have reduced the surface till uh, on the buckle aspect notice that when you are coming to the proximal surface and if there is less amount of space shift to a smaller diameter bar to come in between the contact area otherwise if you use the same amount of bar that is going to touch the adjacent tooth structure and eventually some damage might happen to the adjacent tooth structure care should always be taken about this instance and don't damage the adjacent tooth structure as it can be detrimental at the later stage so after the you've prepared the buccal surface then you can uh, check and observe the preparation the ideally the preparation should be equal from all sides equal widths should be present and you can check with a mirror also uh, if there are anything which is requiring which is requiring more reduction as you can see at this point there is an area which appears to be an undercut so uh, we need to reduce this area we need to clear up so that there are no undercuts and in a situation like this if you leave such an area the technician tends to block it out now next step is to prepare the functional cusp bevel uh, there are different methods of preparing functional cusp bevel uh, it's the easiest part some some people prefer to uh, place the handpiece in in the direction like i've shown right now but I prefer it to be in this situation in which the bar is facing the buccal mucosa. And uh, at an angle of 45 degrees, just reduce the cusp tip, the buccal cusp tip, and uh, at, it will be reduced in this way. Uh, even if the tooth structure, tooth height is compromised, uh, you're not reducing the whole amount of tooth structure. 
rather just a small amount and that can give a functional cusp bevel and uh, uh, it's quite visible over here that there's an angle of 45 degrees from the axial wall to the from the and the occlusal surface we can uh, blend the uh, functional cusp bevel and make it a rounded appearance and uh, now we shift towards the lingual aspect the lingual side needs a lot of preparation a lot of uh, care to be prepared uh, if the visibility is not clear you can shift yourself to the opposite side of the patient and start preparing from that side making sure that the burr is or the handpiece the burr especially is perpendicular or it's sorry it's parallel to the long axis of the tooth and uh, in this way you can be pretty clear that there are no undercuts available or no undercuts present so uh, over in this in this position we are preparing a chamfer for the lingual aspect and the chamfer is going to be prepared by we are using a um, straight fissure burr with a rounded end and i'm just embedding the half of the burr in the tooth structure not the whole of it because if i embed the whole of the tooth burr in the tooth structure that is going to create a j-shaped appearance and it eventually will lead to a um, unsupported enamel which will eventually break off during impression or cast preparation so um, here i have uh, reduced the lingual aspect and i'm i've tried to prepare a chamfer margin over in this situation now we are going to blend the same chamfered margin preparation and extend it towards the proximal surfaces. Here I'm extending it towards the, the mesial side, and the same I'm going to I'm going to prepare on the distal aspect. Notice that since the second molars are slightly more mesially tilted, they there is a tendency that they will uh, you might end up touching that adjacent part of the of the tooth structure. So use a narrow diameter burr. But in a situation like this where you're using a narrow diameter burr, the, the, there is a chance that you might be cr uh, creating a J-shaped appearance of the margin. Now that needs to be cleared off, that needs to be uh, smoothened up by the use of hatchets and as well as an end cutting burr. So uh, right now I'm refining the margin which I prepared from the proximal surface and uh, from the lingual side to the proximal surfaces. So uh, the occlusal surface needs to be uh, also no sharp angles, no, no sharp line angles are supposed to be present, rounding off all those occlusal surfaces. And now, this is a very important step. After you prepare the, the, uh, the crown, at the line angles, mark a line with a sharp pencil touching only the line angle. If you're able to see the, all the lines on the tooth surface from the occlusal view, that means that you have enough taper of the tooth. But if you don't see any part of the line, then you need to reduce that particular respective part of the tooth so that you can, you are, the line is visible. So uh, we had a little problem in the buccal aspect, so that is why I'm reducing the, line, the tooth structure from the buccal aspect so that this line is visible. Remember, this line is only supposed to be visible along the long axis of the tooth, and uh, it shouldn't be in a situation that a lot of the tooth structure is gone just for making the line visible. So after this, um, we, we will cut the putty index into equal half of the tooth surface from the central fossa and we'll place it over the to prepare to surface as you can see from here we have equal uh, reduction we have a properly made function cusp bevel and the occlusal clearance from that side is almost around two millimeters and the central fossa is prepared and the putty index also indicates that the central fossa has not shifted forwards or on the buckle or the lingual aspect Whereas on the lingual aspect, we can see that there is a properly made chamfer. So this is going to be the end result of our preparation. This is going to be, in, if we prepare it this way, uh, we will be ensuring that the technician will be providing us with a, and with a restoration which has an adequate thickness, as well as uh, the technician will also be providing us uh, a restoration which has an adequate strength. Thank you very much for your kind attention. This comes to the end of our preparation of the molars.